Hi everyone. Now in the vice is a a goose nymph, or like basically tied in the same style as Frank Sawyer's pheasant tail. Uh, now I did a video recently using the the goose the same fiber, this one here tied with the thread, and I held up this fly saying look, I, I, for a weighted pattern because this is unweighted. I like to use. Uh, the, the Sawyer's pheasant tail style version using this fibre, using the goose fibre and uh, this is a pattern and the, the base, uh, the question was could I tie one and it was to see how I actually use the goose this is a goose feather here, this is the one I dyed uh, it was a natural grey, as you can see there's a natural grey and it's dyed yellow, I'll show you the yellow it's a lovely deep or golden yellow and this is the colour you get when you dye. I'll show you the back, you can see the olive shine from it. This is what you get when you dye natural grey, uh, yellow, you get a lovely olive. So I'm going to tie this fly, I'll show you how it's done. Now, uh, I could have, I was going to tie a smaller one, uh, but the idea was, well the question was, uh, because the fibre's quite, not as long as the pheasant tail fibre, though it's not far off it. Uh, it's a different fibre, uh, but anyway, I'd like, to, could I see it tied on a size 12, uh, just to see what you do. So anyway, the thread, or in this case wire, um, I'll tie the fly using the copper wire. This is Venier's wire, and you can see the diameter there. It's copper wire, extra fine, and it's 0 0.125 milli millimetres. Now what I do is, I start head length away, Make sure you get enough waste, because you're going to use the waste as a rib. But head length away from the eye. Now, I'm going to get them down about the thorax length. Oops, I'm going to come back up. Just to build up the thorax and add a bit more weight. Come back down. And then head to basically just before we get around the bend. There. Yeah. And then we get our or dyed goose. Now we need to I need a good wide sort of width again at least. I could count the fibres, two, four, six. Well there's nine there. So this is going to form the the whole fly really. That's got the tail. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling them out to the, the ends line up. When I'm happy with the ends lined up I can tear it off. So there they're there. It's going to form our tail. I usually just bring them together. They will stay together a wee bit, but once they're in the water, they do open out. Tail length, well, it can be not too long, you don't want it way long. Uh, I'm not saying it'll not catch fish, it's just uh, if it's shorter, it lasts longer than the, the long. The long will wear out, and, uh, it just does a wee bit quicker. Uh, even with the tail goes, the fly will still catch though. But anyway, we're going to put a tail on it. So there's where tail length is the body length. So I'm just going to hold that. I'm going to bring the wire up so it's only about, say, an inch away from the shank. So that when I, I use the, the hook to hold it, come around quite quick because it's a short length. Just open out the fibre a wee bit just to see how it's sitting. See what we're like. About this point, we can actually move it around. I feel it's, it's actually came around a wee bit, so I'm just going to bring it on the top. And once I'm happy, I'll give you a quick look. That looks fine. And then I can take quickly take up the wire, tidy things. To right at the so sort of head length away from the eye. Now, because this is the weakest fibre, we wind towards myself. And the main reason for that is that when I wind the rib on normal way, the way I wind, it will catch in more fibre and make it stronger. And you can see the hair, it's really nice. Just take my time coming up. The wide little width covers quickly. Get to this point, catch it on with a cross, with a turn, a turn onto the, the shank or onto the hook. That'll hold it. Then we use the waist pieces of a rib, so we come up. I usually come up about three turns, bring the waist of the goose over the back, continue up to the 
the head of the fly, do a turn, bring over the waist, just spread it out, catch it on. We're trying to save bulk here. So one, two, three, three turns there, it's enough to hold it. Do a nice sharp pair of scissors, trim that away. Keeping the wire, we can bend tight, we can then bend and break away the waist. We can actually put finish straight away or we can just come down, just take our time, come down with three turns or so, come back up, about three turns. I don't mind the head size, I like, it adds weight to the fly and colour. And then we put finish, heading back down, tighten, just take your time, bend and break away your wire. And it's like, and there we are. Now what I want to do now, varnish in there, I'll allow that to soak into the, the head. All the way around, there you go. A couple of coats, if you want to make it really neat and tidy. There we are. Basically that's it. Uh, I'm going to brush, I'm going to brush here. I'm just going to brush the tail. Once you start to use the fly, the tail will open out. It's lovely and soft. It's very, I mean, it is there, but as I say, as many, I have tactile midge pupa like this, as well as olives and so on. It, it, it does swim a wee bit. It will eventually wear uh, and eventually break off, but the fly keeps fishing. Uh, sometimes I've convinced that even fish is better once it's wore out. So again, there we are. That's how I tie it. That's how I tie using the the dyed or the goose, or the goose feather. Uh, it's really good. I mean, I dyed quite a few. So rights and lefts, I I'll go through it. It's good in a lot of patterns. Dry flies, nymphs, obviously, and even wets. So certainly worth having. So hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.